Welcome to today's episode on Quilt 101. My name is Emily and today we are going to be talking about ironing and how to sew patchwork quilts. So a patchwork quilt is pretty simple. It's different squares, the sizes change, the fabrics can change, but it's just a whole bunch of squares kind of lined up together. So we have quite a few quilts um, that you can buy on Quilt 101 that are patchwork quilts. Our gingham one is a really popular patchwork quilt along with our ombre, like the ombre square one is also a patchwork quilt. And so I'm just gonna kind of show you the easiest way on how to lay out the quilt and then the most effective way to sew it and iron it. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So the first thing you're gonna do with the patchwork quilt is you're gonna lay it all out. And you can do this on the floor, on a table. It doesn't really matter what surface. So today I am just going to be making just a simple cross. And this is just gonna represent a mini quilt. So you guys will still understand what I'm talking about, I hope, by the end of this. So I am just laying it out. And then the nice thing about Quilt 101 is whenever you order a custom quilt, is it comes pre-cut. So with a patchwork quilt, it already comes cut out into these squares. And so you don't have to spend all of the time, you know, cutting them out yourself and worrying about the measurements because we've already done that work for you. So here is this simple plus sign all lined up. So the first thing that I do is I like to number the rows. So there's a few ways you can do this. I like to use these pins that have numbers on them. They're super convenient, highly recommend them, but if you don't have them, you can also just use normal pins and then just write the number on a piece of paper and tack it on that way. That works just as well. So what I do first is I take them in, um, in numerical order and then I pin it on the first square of each row in the top left corner. So I'm just gonna go down, so there's one, here's the second row, and then the third row. And so once you have the pins put in to each of the rows, I then go through and I stack each of these. And so you'll have a stack of, the, of each row. Okay, so once all these are put together, I'm gonna do what's called chain piecing. Now chain piecing is just a really fancy way of sewing really quickly, which is totally my style because let's be honest, if there's a quicker way to do it, I'm all there. So I'm just gonna teach you the basics of chain piecing. So we're gonna go over to the sewing machine. So now we're at the sewing machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the first square on the first row and then we're gonna take the second square from the first row and we're gonna make sure the right sides are together and we're gonna line them up. And so once they're lined up, I'm gonna take, um, take it over to, to sew and then I have my quarter foot on my sewing machine so I have the quarter inch seam allowance. And it's very important to keep the seam allowance the exact same the entire time. So make sure that if you start the project, you know, if you end it one day and you start it another, just make sure that the foot is at the same spot the entire time. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to sew straight down. And then once it gets to the bottom, instead of cutting the thread, I am just gonna go straight to my second row. So I'm gonna do, once again, the right sides together. So I have the first square of the second row. Now the second square on the second row, right sides together, line them up, and then I'm just gonna go straight into it. And then we just repeat this process with the third row. And then you just do it until um, until it's all done, or until that first row is done at least. All right, so right sides together, so. All right, so now that we have the first two pieces sewn together, what we do now is we just open it. And so now here's the right side of the first row. So now I'm just gonna take the third piece of the first row, right sides together, line it up, 
just make sure that all the seams are straight. And then we're just going to continue doing that all over again. All right, second row. See, chain piecing goes really quickly, you guys. I wasn't lying. Last but not least, right sides together, line it up, and so. Okay, so now that all of my pieces are sewn together, now I rip the now I rip the thread. And so what you have is pieces that are chained together like this. And so now we are going to cut, oops, Let's see if I can get this. We're gonna trim these threads and so that way all of the rows are separated. And so I, you can do this with scissors. I just go through on my sewing machine with a little cutting tool and just trim it off there. And so now that all the rows are separated, we're gonna take these over to the ironing station and I'll show you the best way to iron and you guys are don't want to miss this because this will make your life so much easier when it comes to sewing. At the ironing board we're going to take the first row. Now the most important thing to remember when you are ironing a patchwork quilt is the iron or is the direction in which you're ironing. So let me show you. Let, I, you got to stick with me here. So what you have to remember is each row that is an odd number is ironed one way and each row that is an even number is ironed the other way and so what that does is it allows the seams to nestle into each other and allows you to have really crisp and sharp lines with your finished quilt so i am starting off with row number one and the kind of i don't know what i just have always done is um, with the odds and odd numbers i iron from left to right and so let me show you what that means so i take this and I, I keep the one over on the side take my iron that is steaming hot and then i iron using a 90 degree angle and do you see how the seam is kind of folding in like that all right and then you have a really really nice it's still warm <laughs> um a nice crisp first row so now we're gonna go to row number two so row number two, we're doing the opposite. So I'm gonna leave the two up in this corner and then I am going to once again, take this, hold it at a 90 degree angle and just move the iron straight over it. Same over here, just move the iron straight over it. Okay, row two is done. Row three, we're going to reverse this. And so the three is on the side closest to the iron. So we're gonna take this 90 degree angle again and just iron it so you get the really crisp lines. And now I can kind of show you what I mean by them nestling into each other. So here's row two and here's row three. So whenever you, um, so whenever you iron things, or not iron things, whenever you sew things right sides together Right? And so these are gonna be like this. And then you can tell, I don't know if you can, if you can see this, but these seams nestle into each other. So they're hugging each other. And so whenever you can feel it in your fingers, you can feel them whenever you get that perfect nestling, I don't know, the perfect nestle. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, and so now we're gonna take this back to the sewing machine and so we'll sew it all together. Now that we're back at our sewing station, we are going to now sew our, our nicely pressed rows. We're gonna iron, or not iron, we're going to sew them together. So we have our first row, and so we're going to flip it, and so we have right sides together. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the second pin because it just gets in the way, and no one got time for that. Um, so now we are going to take our pin and we're going to find the intersection 
of these seams. And you can do that by feeling it. You'll feel them interlocking with each other. So once you feel these seams coming together, you're gonna take a pin and you're going to push that right through. And then you're just gonna repeat this. So now we're at this intersection and then we're going to, by feeling it, you can feel it whenever they're nice, nice and intersected. And then we're gonna take the pin, we're gonna pin it. So now we go to the sewing machine. We're gonna line up those corners. And then we're going to sew these together. those first two sewn together and then you can kind of see whenever this is opened those lines you guys are crisp as rocks I don't even know if that's a phrase but I'm gonna say it is because look how perfectly those intersect so we're gonna go ahead and um, and sew together rows two and three and then we'll go back to the ironing station so we have all three rows now sewn together so we have almost a complete um, a complete mini quilt as I am calling it. So now all we have to do is we have to iron the last the last seams to make it super crisp. So I first go around and I set the back, but I kind of got messy with that one, you guys. I apologize. So I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to snip off any of these extra threads because the thing is any like these extra threads eventually add bulk to the final project or product and bulk isn't pretty. So just kind of go through, trim off um, extra thread so that way you can just reduce the bulk. All right, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the seams. And so what that means is I'm just gonna take the iron and I just literally pat it like that and that, make sure the iron is on. And then I'm gonna go and do it on this other side too. And that just sets the seam to make sure that it irons out really nice. All right, and so now that those seams are set, I'm gonna go through and once again, using the 90 degree method, I'm gonna go through and iron those down. And then 90 degrees, hold that up, press it down, and then just kind of give it an all over press and check that out. So we're done. We have our final, we have our final mini quilt. So the most important things are just to remember to iron it the right way, to always have the, the, the a consistent seam allowance and you'll get a perfect result pretty much every single time. Thank you so much for watching this video tutorial today. Watch more videos like this at quilt101.com. We'll see you next time.